Thank you all again for coming to True Health Diagnostics um, free webinar, the latest in exercise, e-tools, and trends. Again, for those of you who have jumped on here in the last couple minutes, my name is Jody Drange, and I'm one of the clinical health consultants. Today, I will be your presenter as well as your moderator. Um, and again, this is um, with True Health Diagnostics, empowering health through insight. We do currently advanced testing for cardiovascular disease and diabetes. Um, and my role in the company is that I do have, um, whoop, there we go, um, is that I am a clinical health consultant. Um, so part of my time, I'm in doctor's offices seeing patients um, face to face. And the other part of my time is over the phone talking with patients from all across uh, the United States. Um, so it's nice to um, talk, um, you know, with people from all different parts of the country. Um, so I am a registered dietitian, a certified diabetes educator, and I am um, also certified with ACSM um, as an exercise physiologist. And I'm actually out here in Phoenix, Arizona, um, where it is beautiful weather right now, but I'm sure that will change in the next month or so. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, just a couple housekeeping things actually before I get to this uh, slide here. Over on the right hand side of your screen, you will see um, all of your options um, for today's presentation. And if you look down, um, you should be able to see uh, that there are is a place for chat. Um, and that's kind of where the questions would go. Um, or you can always put it into, um, I'm sorry, the regular chat box, or there's also a question box. So um, either one of those would be fine. Um, since I am moderating as well as speaking today, um, feel free to put questions in there at any time throughout the presentation, um, but I will probably get to those at the very end. I'll kind of go through those and um, leave some time for those questions to be answered. So let's go ahead and get started here. So a quick reminder, um, prior to starting any exercise program, you want to make sure that you speak with your physician to make sure that you are healthy enough to begin exercising. And then also I am going to mention a lot of different apps and kind of websites throughout this presentation. Um, and we are, this is an independent presentation and has not been authorized, sponsored, or otherwise approved by any company other than True Health Diagnostics, which will go through what we offer here for eTools. All right, so today's objectives, um, what are current exercise recommendations? We'll go through those. Top exercise trends for 2016, and then how to shift from print to online, and then learning how this shift can really help you achieve your goals easier than ever. So exercising in the 21st century, so again, really what this means is that these health tools are available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So again, no more waiting until Monday to start something or to see somebody. Again, you can jump online at any time and have access to what you need. Online health content is new. Seasonal, fun, and personalized for you, the consumer. So again, you can kind of find what is the right fit for you. And then you can get the information when you want it. Um, and staying with us through this presentation, and we'll give you some of the best e-tools available to make achieving your goals easier than ever. Um, and the other thing is I know there's a lot of resources in this program, um, so what will happen is at the end um, we can take email addresses um, and get this um, sent out to you um, so that, again, you'd have it be able to go back into reference. So um, we can always get that into the question box at the end. So why exercise? So exercise is important for weight maintenance or weight loss. So metabolism and body composition are both affected when we start to exercise. Um, exercise definitely helps us to reduce stress. Um, so it could be that we now handle stress betterly because we were kind of able to get some of that tension out during exercise. Maybe it was we just needed a peaceful, quiet walk in the morning, and that helps us to get our day started off um, a little bit differently than the chaotic, you know, I got up 10 minutes late and running out the door, which we all have those days, but if we can kind of put that buffer in to do some exercise specifically in the morning, then again, that can definitely help us throughout the day. 
um, in regards to stress management, also improving energy throughout your day. Um, so maybe better concentration around that two to three time, two to three time, um, two to three p.m. time frame in the afternoon, where again a lot of us have a little bit of that lull um, in that sleepiness. Um, but most importantly, exercise can have a major effect on your health. Um, so these are just a few of the labs that we offer here at True Health um, Diagnostics that, again, can be modified and changed through adding exercise into your um, daily routine. So what are the exercise recommendations? These ones come from the American Heart Association. Um, but also, these are the exact same um, that the American Council of Sports Medicine would also recommend as well. Um, and so it's 150 minutes per week of moderate exercise. Um, and the key is in moderate, um, because if you do more vigorous, it does cut down the time just a little bit. But most people really should be working in this moderate exercise intensity. And what that is, is that if you were exercising with your wife or with a friend, you don't want to continue to have a conversation. Um, as I'm having with you today, it would be that you would take five to seven words and then have to take a breath in order to kind of catch your breath and finish the rest of the sentence. So not mall walking, but we're moving a little bit faster with some real intention. So this can be split up in different ways. So 30 minutes of exercise five times a week, or if we go a little bit longer to 50 minutes, we can exercise three times per week. So again, just being able to kind of take that those minutes, break them down, and make them work for you. And then the last one is at least 15 minutes of strength training two days per week. And we will definitely talk about strength training a little bit later on in the presentation. Um, but this is one that tends to get skipped. Um, sometimes it's because we're not really sure what to do or how to do it safely, um, which again, we will go through that. Um, but also sometimes it's easier just to put on our shoes and go for a walk or go for a run, you know, again, versus maybe having to buy a little equipment, which again, we'll kind of address that a little bit later. So social media can help you lose weight, um, but more than lose weight, just really kind of, you know, help keep you accountable to the healthy lifestyle that you're aiming for. So information, again, is being shared on social media on all platforms, um, anything from inspirational quotes to healthy recipes to workout routines. Um, and so the four that I have list, listed here are really the ones that Health Diagnostics, or I'm sorry, True Health Diagnostics um, participates in Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube. Um, and probably the other platform that is now, well, probably the other two that are out there um, would be Instagram and then maybe Snapchat. So Snapchat. So again, that would depend on, again, you know, how, how many apps you want to put on your phone. Um, but again, those are other places as well. So again, I mentioned that True Health Diagnostics um, has some e-tools. So let's talk about what we have here. So number one, we have Facebook. Um, so we definitely are sharing healthy recipes, inspirational co quotes, um, and also this is where a lot of our blogs are going to start to be posted. So anything from clinical health consultants writing about, um, I think the last one that went up was about stress management to reading labels, um, and then we're also going to have some of our docs start posting as well. Um, so it's going to be a great array of information, so definitely um, check us out. And then um, other places to check on Facebook would maybe be like My Plate, American Heart Association, American um, Diabetes Association. Um, those, again, would be some good reputable ones to check out. Secondly, we have here on Twitter. If you were on Twitter, please go ahead and go find us. Um, again, health tips, wellness challenges, real-time interactions are what's going to kind of happen over here on Twitter. And so, again, we have a little list here of other um, companies that, get, again, give out reputable information um, that you can definitely go and check out. The other thing on Twitter is that we actually have clinical health consultants on Twitter. Um, so you can see here on the left-hand side of the page uh, my Twitter account. Um, the last post that I did um, actually was a little bit before this, um, just reminding people to sign up and register for today's presentation. Um, so again, you know, more of that 
in the moment kind of contact with our patients. Um, and then the other clinical health consultant is Stacy Wheatley. Um, so again, both posting good information and both can be um, interactive with our patients. So again, if you haven't checked us out, please go ahead and do that because um, we'd love to hear from you. The next um, one that we're going to talk about is Pinterest. Um, so this specifically is our exercise board, lots of great information, and again, this is coming from our blogs. A lot of it comes from our blogs um, that we have, um, and on this particular board, we have 40,000 followers. So if you're not one of them, please go ahead and jump on. Um, when you go to Pinterest, just search True Health Diagnostics, um, and that will go ahead and bring up um, this information, and then you'll be able to get plugged in and see when we're posting new blogs. So let's talk about trends. What's trending in exercise for 2016? So the first one that I want to talk about is HIT. So maybe some of you have heard of this, maybe some of you have not, um, but it stands for High Intensity Interval Training. Um, and so this is a form of cardiovascular exercise that alternates short intervals of really high intensity, kind of all out work with lower intense, lower intervals of low to moderate intensity exercise. Um, and so when we talk about this, and we'll look at kind of what that format um, kind of really looks like with exercise, but there's the warm up and then there's some cycles of high intensity exercise with the low to moderate um, segments, and then finally that cool down. So it can last anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, um, kind of depending on what you are doing. So here are some examples of the high intensity interval training. Um, so one we have over here on the left um, is probably a little bit more on the cardiovascular, kind of getting our heart rate up type of exercise, um, where the ones over on the left-hand side is, again, going to be something that's more um, doing some strength training and some large body muscle movement. So um, HIT can be applied to any exercise. So if we take an example of running, um, for this example over here on the left. So we would maybe do some walking for five minutes, and then we do 30 seconds of, um, you know, as fast as we can go, and then we're going to slow down more to a walking pace for 60 seconds to allow our heart rate to come back down, okay? And then we're going to kind of go 60 seconds hard, 90 second rest with walking, and then again, we're just going to repeat that sequence for three to five times, and then add that cool down at the bottom. But again, more than just running, this can be applied to stair steppers, ellipticals, cycling, rowing, um, any of those types of things. Or if we're working out at home, maybe even jump roping is a good cardiovascular exercise. Where on the right-hand side here, again, this is doing more um, body weight exercises with squats and push-ups. And the one thing that I would say here is just because we're going from standing up to down on the floor, if you have any issues with blood pressure, these might not be the two best exercises to pair together because sometimes we can get lightheaded when we're going from the floor to a standing position. So again, just kind of use that one with moderation. But again, you can see um, how you would set up that high intensity interval training program. And again, something that you could do at home. All right, and so here are some other examples of HIT training. Um, Insanity, P90X, T25, those are all um, beach body programs. CrossFit, again, there's lots of gyms, or again, you can check them out online. Um, the Daily HIT, this is just actually a YouTube channel um, that will pull up. Um, Jillian Michaels, again, on YouTube, probably has a website, uh, but I know her videos are on um, either in the store or, again, you can get them on YouTube. And then the last one is Tabata. And so on our next slide here, we're going to learn about what is Tabata. So this is a form of HIIT training. Um, so basic Tabata format is 20 seconds of intense workout followed by 10 seconds of rest. And this is what makes it different than the other HIIT training. We could go in all of these different types of intervals as far as time, but Tabata is really specific to 20 seconds of intense workout followed by 10 seconds of rest. So if we repeat this eight times, that actually only goes four minutes. Um, so again, there's research that again, you know, with just these short 
kind of intense bounce that we can definitely see um, some really good results. Um, so Tabata as well as HIT um, training, those two are actually really good for anybody who's in that pre-diabetic state, um, has some insulin resistance. This type of um, exercise is really beneficial for you. Um, somebody who has possibly diabetes, we maybe want to be a little bit more careful um, because of the blood sugar drops. Um, but pre-diabetes and insulin resistance, this would be really good for you. Um, and again, it's definitely researched and, and found that um, it's a great addition to any workout, again, because it's four minutes, or again, we can start to build up these four-minute cycles um, to get a little bit more time in for exercise. And so here on the next slide, again, we have an example of what Tabata could look like for you. Um, so again, we do the 20-second to the 10-second rest, so jumping jacks, squats, high knees, lunges, butt kicks, um, push-ups, mountain climbers, wall sits, again, all things that are body weight um, and don't need any excess um, equipment other than maybe a good pair of shoes and a little bit of space. But this one specifically does a full body because, um, again, it kind of works head to toes um, with those muscles. But if we don't have equipment, no problem, because resistance training isn't just um, the same, isn't the same without resistance. So your own body weight can be used as resistance. Your body doesn't know where that weight is coming from, if it's our body weight or if it's an actual dumbbell or a kettlebell. So once you learn a few great body weight exercises, the amount of workouts that you can create are actually endless. So let's start with some examples here. So this is going to be the lower body, so kind of working from the waist down. And you can see through the pictures here is that we have an example of each one of these. So again, we have that lunge, and then to the squat, um, and then down on the bottom we have the wall sit, the step up, and the calf raise. So again, not requiring any um, equipment and then you know as far as for that step up or you know the calf raise again this is something you could do on you know your back porch if you have some steps or you could do it for your steps if you have you know kind of that double story house and then up into the upper body oh I'm sorry I just learned that my audio is kind of cutting in and out, but um, I will try to stand still maybe a little bit more. That might might help a little bit. Um, so with the body weight exercises, this is again can kind of be from the waist up. So we have push-ups here, which is actually the picture down here on the left. They're doing it from their knees, but again this could be from the wall all the way down to our knees and then all the way up to our toes as we progress. Um, Superman is kind of the top picture we have here on our right. And um, so this is lifting the legs and the arms together. So kind of like we're flying like Superman. Um, some shoulder stabilization and then lastly to our tricep dips. Um, and again, this can be done on the floor and then progress to a step and then progress to um, like a chair. Kind of again, all depending on the range of motion that you're looking for. And the last one is that total body kind of core, which a lot of people talk about. But the core is really, again, kind of engaging, um, you know, the, the front muscles, kind of in the ab, you know, that six pack, but all the way around actually to the back as well and stabilizing the spine. So we have a plank, again, up on the forearms, up on the toes, which again, you can modify this. Mountain climbers, inchworm, um, you can see here where the guy is initially bent over and then kind of walks his hands out and then walks his hand back, and then the Russian twist. And um, again, so all of those are working on that total body kind of core um, concept. Um, and so here is actually a sample of a workout um, that, again, is all body weight. So again, from jumping jacks to wall sit, push-ups, domino crunch, step on a chair, and we'll actually kind of revisit this one really quickly a little bit later. Um, but again, you can see that it's basically taken all of the exercises that we've talked about and then put them into a program. 
So the benefits of body weight exercises is again, that it can be performed at any location. Um, what I love about this is again, when you travel for a conference or maybe go visit family, all you need again is a little bit of space, but you don't need to fill your suitcase with exercise equipment in order to get that workout in. Um, Cause it's so important to stay consistent um, with an exercise program. Because sometimes when we go on vacation, we kind of throw, throw it all out the door. It's hard to get started when we come back home. Um, so again, trying to maintain some consistency while we're out of the house um, is great. So again, quick and efficient, for surely modifiable. So again, based on your fitness level, um, again, you know, just with the push-ups, we can go from doing something on the door or a wall um, all the way down to our toes to change that fitness level. And then lastly, it's definitely affordable. So here are some tools for exercise that we're going to go through. So again, these are all um, different apps and we're going to pick out some of these specifically um, to go over. And then, um, but again, this is only a, a little bit of what's out there. So definitely um, explore, um, ask friends what they're using because um, these are great tools. So the first one is fitness class. Um, so again, this should be available for iPhone as well as Android. Um, but what this has is kind of free programs. So you can see how long they last. Um, so if we look on the right side here, we have anything from the five minute abs um, all the way down to a 63 minute body transformation workout. Um, and again, there is a free version of this and then there's one that you might have to pay a little bit for to again, get a bigger library to choose from for exercises. But again, um, great resource. The second one here is Swirk It. Um, so this one I thought was really cool because um, you can personalize video workouts. So one, it's great to be able to visually see um, versus again in print, sometimes we just have the black and white, how do I do this? But with um, these apps, again, a lot of them are video based. So then you can actually see to do the move, but then also making sure that you're doing it correctly. And so the thing with Swirk It is that you actually get to choose, again, stretching, cardio, strength, yoga, but then you also get to customize how much time do I have? Do I only have five minutes or do I have a full 60 minutes? And I can do my workout based on that time frame. So again, you know, in the morning I got up a little bit late. I just need to get something in, you know, to kind of start my day or kind of keeping that consistency of a routine. And then again, something like this would be really great. Um, this is actually one of my favorites. Um, I tell a lot of people about this, um, the Nike Training Club. Um, this is technically Nike's women's um, app, but it is good for men as well. Um, so again, you get to choose from beginner to advanced um, when you log into this website or into this app. And then it's an interval style. So again, it's gonna go for about a minute and then it's gonna move you to the next exercise. Um, one thing that they added is that you can now um, implement your own music into the background on this. Um, so I thought that was a great feature. Um, they're starting to give away stars and um, prizes as you continue to um, complete the different workouts. Um, and it's also social, so there's a community on there as well that can definitely help with support. The next one, I've definitely seen a lot of people use this. Um, it stands for couch to 5K. So 5K would be a 3.2 mile run. Um, and so what this does is basically start you from, I've done nothing sitting on the couch, um, to actually being able to run the full 5K or the full three miles. So this will take you through intervals and it basically just beeps at you, says start walking. It'll beep at you, say okay, start jogging. And again, it, those intervals just continue to get longer and longer as you progress through the program. Um, so this is one that I used with one of my friends and we were up to five miles before we kind of knew what happened. Um, so it um, was again, something really great to make that progression. Um, and so the seven minute workout challenge. So this is um, came out, I think like in the New York Times, um, probably about a couple years ago, but a lot of research around this seven minute workout um, and that full um, body workout that we looked at 
um, that had 12 exercises, that's basically what this seven minute workout is. Um, so again, it's gonna tell you how much time and then it's gonna show you the next exercise and kind of progress you through this. So ideally, we know we wanna get 150 minutes a week, so we might have to do this a couple of times, but again, seven minutes is gonna be better than not working out at all. So great starting place, or if you really love it, then be able to kind of cycle through it a couple times. The next one is Map My Run. Um, so this is a very social app, and I'll tell you why even on the next slide. Um, but this goes through your GPS. So again, it helps you kind of keep track of how far you're going. So if you're kind of weaving through neighborhoods, um, you know, or you're out on a trail, again, this is going to show you, number one, where you were. Um, but number two, it'll show you um, how much time it takes you to get a mile. So if you can see here on the right-hand side under splits, um, the first mile is 11 minutes and 45 seconds, second mile is a little bit quicker at 11 minutes, 16 seconds, and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, if you're training for something, this is really good to see kind of what your pace is along the way, but also when you start to do a little bit more mileage, um, then again, you can kind of run through those neighborhoods and, and still know where you are instead of getting your car and trying to drive the same routine. And so the other thing with, um, with this one is that they also have a lot more social um, apps that are out there. So map my fitness, map my ride, map my hike, my walk, my dog walk, um, all of those things. So again, showing you the distance um, that you're going, but then also provides you with the social aspect of comparing to other people as far as who's walked that trail before, who has done that hike before, how fast were they able to go, and those types of things. And next here we have monitors. And so this was, again, on the trends for 2016, was these monitors keep getting smarter and smarter um, and adding more information that they can track. Um, so it's more than just your steps nowadays. Um, it's calories burned, To A lot of people really like the sleep option on it, um, and that can help as well. The other thing is they tend to get a little bit smarter um, since you're, there are some activities that you don't, maybe like cycling, that don't necessarily track your steps. Um, you can actually put it on there and then it, um, like put it into a certain mode that will track your heart rate. And then once you press stop at the end of your bike ride, then it will transition that over to steps so that you can still kind of count those in there um, and show that. But Definitely links to your phone, your computer, daily reminders, and again, very social um, because you can create challenges on here with, um, you know, if your whole family has Fitbits or maybe work gave them out and you guys have them, then again, you can kind of create these challenges in the background um, and um, kind of do that in order to compete with others and, and try to get those steps up to about 10,000 per day. Another monitor is the Jawbone, again, very similar to, um, to the Fitbit. Again, just another, another one to kind of check into. The other thing with these monitors is that they actually are coordinating. If you see down here on the right-hand side, they're coordinating to other apps. So MyFitnessPal, RunKeeper, MapMyFitness, LoseIt, which we'll kind of talk about a little bit here. Um, and so then, therefore, you know, if you're using those um, certain apps, again, everything will just automatically link up. So, again, using multiple apps, but kind of tracking, you know, all the information that you want to. Um, and then this was one that I found that I, that I really liked. Um, it was called Rock My Run. Um, so what it does is it actually um, monitors your heart rate. Um, and it allows you to set a tempo. So let's say if you're, you know, going to run a 5K or a half marathon, you're like, I want to run, you know, an 830-minute mile. 
or I want to run a 10 minute mile. So what you would do is you would program this app to, you know, please set me up the tempo of, you know, a 10 minute mile and what it'll do is it'll keep you on there so kind of your steps will go in line with that tempo um, to make sure that you're kind of staying on track with what your goal is um, and so different stations are on there that you can definitely pick at um, or pick from um, in order you know depending on do I like country do I like hip-hop um, you know all of those things in between so Again, I thought this was a really great app, especially as I'm starting to, to run a little bit more. Um, this is definitely one that I downloaded. Um, so next is YouTube. Um, again, these are free videos that are out there. Um, and it's, depending on what you're searching, you can find exercise for all levels. So something from chair exercises, because I'm having a little bit of issue with my balance, um, to uh, hit type of training, um, and then to yoga, so something for more, um, again, depending on what level you're at, um, could be more stretching, or again, it could be more of a power yoga that would increase um, strength and stability. Um, and so here's just a, a couple um, that I found, so Pop Sugar Fitness, here was a 15-minute, 150-calorie burning workout, and again, didn't require any um, any equipment and then another one was the fitnessblender.com but again if you just search in um, in the YouTube search box again you'll find a whole bunch so again just kind of refining them to find what you like or you know if you're working with a clinical health consultant again they can definitely work with you in order to kind of fine-tune your choices and help you find um, you know again what's best for you um, the other thing is um, there's lots of areas that you can stream fitness. So these are just two um, that I feel like I hear a lot about. Um, so one is the Daily Burn. You can see Bob there. Um, he works with that website. Um, again, kind of putting in all of your, um, you know, the gender, your current weight, what your goals are. And again, they'll um, kind of fine tune those workouts for you. Um, as well as Beachbody On Demand. So we all know that they have a bunch of those videos, P90X, um, but here it actually um, is all streamed online, so no more having to carry around any type of DVDs or, or anything like that. Um, so again, um, each of these come with like a 30-day trial, and then after that it's a small fee. Um, and again, you know, instead of paying for the gym, we're just paying for something that we do at home. And so kind of transitioning on, we want to talk about this principle of FIT. Um, and so it stands for frequency, intensity, time, type. And the last one that we added was enjoyment. Um, so setting these SMART goals, again, we want them to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, or relevant, and then timely. Um, so instead of saying, you know, I want to lose 10 pounds by eating right and exercising, over the course of my two-week vacation, which is very difficult to do over a vacation. Um, how we make this an actual SMART goal is that I will maintain my current weight by using the plate planner, which is something um, as clinical health consultants helped with people or help teach people. Um, packing healthy snacks, again, you can brainstorm with your clinical health consultant to figure out exactly what those are for you. And exercising at least 30 minutes every day over the course of my two-week vacation. So again, it's very specific. Um, the time base is two weeks, 30 minutes a day. Um, this patient felt like this was obtainable, realistic. And again, we had the two time or two week time base. And then again, this was something um, that it could be even more specific to say I'm going to walk or ride bike. Again, finding the enjoyment of that exercise. Um, and so since we're kind of transitioning um, over here just a little bit, we don't want to forget about nutrition. So there's lots of apps out there that, again, kind of take it from pen and paper, which is absolutely okay, all the way over to the social network here on your phone. So daily accountability for food logging. Um, this is a great resource for us as a clinical health consultant. Um, if you are tracking your food, it just helps you to provide us with more information, more detailed information, um, in order to help you really reach your goals. 
Um, so these um, apps right here, MyFitnessPal, Spark People, Lose It, Live Strong, are all good. I would say probably the most of the people I see um, typically use MyFitnessPal. Um, but again, you know, it depends on what you find works works the best for you. Um, so with food logging, why do we make you do it? Because sometimes you feel like it's a little bit of a pain. Um, but research has shown that people who log their food and beverages daily lose twice as much weight as those who do not. So again, that daily accountable just really makes you aware of the types and the amounts of foods and beverages that you're consuming each day. Because um, you could be like, oh, I didn't think that I snacked that much. But once I started having to actually document and I realized I was, you know, going to that vending machine every single day where I was, you know, kind of thinking like, oh, it was just, you know, a granola bar. But I really found out I was going for Cheetos two to two days out of the week. Um, so logging your food helps you recognize if and when you eat also in response to the emotions or stress. And so this also is really helpful for us to know. Um, as clinical health consultants um, so that, again, we can work with you on the behavior change part of things and continue to, to help you meet your goals. Um, then we have dining out, so finding healthy options um, when dining out can be hard. So here are just a couple apps that can help you. Um, just going back to my fitness pal really quick, I have some patients who um, will look up foods in there um, before they go and then be like, oh gosh, well I went to Olive Garden and I used to get, you know, the chicken Alfredo pasta dinner, but that would have blown my calories out of the water for the day. So um, I didn't realize that it was as high. So then maybe looking at what else does um, Olive Garden offer? And again, how can I change that um, to Calorie King, um, which is a little bit more kind of diabetic friendly. Um, to the healthy dining finder, um, even like Yelp can be a good app to try to find, you know, something new if you're traveling um, within the area um, and different things like that. Um, so Calorie King, again, this is the one that I said was a little bit more diabetic friendly because it counts the carbohydrate. Um, so here again, you can kind of just see an example of what their app looks like. Um, there's actual hard physical books you can still buy. Um, and they are a website as well. Um, so you have access to them kind of all over the place, um, depending again on, on what you choose. Um, so right now, I'm gonna kind of take a second here and look over the questions. Um, so definitely put them in there um, if you have them. Um, so one of the, the first questions, um, and get this question a lot, is that, um, you know, what about the nutrition? And again, I kind of hit on like where you can record it, um, but it says, um, you know, after, you know, a high intensity interval training type of program, um, you know, your muscles are burning hungry and sore. What is a good time to drink? Is this a good time, I'm sorry, to drink a protein shake and avoid a sugary drink such as Gatorade? And absolutely. So number one, Gatorade was specifically formulated for athletes, um, which most of us might be like weekend warriors. But really, if we're not doing anything continuously kind of high vigorous exercise for more than 60 minutes, we want to try to avoid the Gatorades. There is a G2 that is kind of now for the rest of the population um, that's out there. But really, post-workout, you're wanting to make sure that you use um, ideally food for fuel. If, um, you know, time management is um, is an issue, then again, maybe that protein shake um, could be beneficial for you. But definitely within, they typically say about an hour after working out, especially, um, you know, if it's an intense workout, 60 minutes or less, you want to make sure that you're getting that meal in or that snack in in order to help replace um, kind of what's been kind of tore down through our exercise because um, exercise makes these micro tears in your muscles. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to help to build them up to actually make us stronger. Um, and so um, that's where protein shakes can be helpful, specifically if you're doing a lot of strength training. Um, and the other thing that research shows that you don't want to be just focused on protein, but that you actually want to add some carbohydrate into that. 
So that's why a lot of times you might see like a good um, post-workout drink is actually more like milk or chocolate milk. So part of it is that with chocolate milk, it has those fast sugars to get into your blood really quickly. Um, it has the lactose, which is the milk um, sugar, which is a little bit harder to break down. So again, it's going to kind of last a little bit longer. And then lastly, you have the whey protein in there. Um, so again, like eight ounces, um, you know, post-recovery to make sure that you're getting some type of carbohydrate along with the protein. Um, if we're doing a protein style drink, you know, then again, maybe we can blend in some fruit, um, you know, some whole fruit or have a piece of fruit on the side. Again, if we have time management or we're coming from the gym, um, but making sure that you have those combinations because again, together um, is really what is making your recovery that much greater. All right, so moving on to the next question here. Um, how often should be hit, how often should hit be done? Um, and so hit training, they typically say two to three days a week. Um, and most often from what I've seen is about 30 minutes or less. So again, it could be that I did it for 15 minutes. Um, you know, and then maybe took a, a walk for another 15 minutes, again, if we're trying to get that 150 minutes for the week, um, but then also to do strength training on that day would be absolutely okay. Um, you know, again, kind of um, just making sure that, you know, you take enough time to kind of recover after your, um, let's say if you're doing the treadmill and kind of doing that sprinting and walking, just making sure that your heart rate has come back down, um, you know, before that you go over to start strength training. Um, again, just to make sure that you're safe and that you have the kind of recovered with your um, energy level a little bit in order to be safe when you go to, to strength training. But absolutely, you could do those on the same day. Um, Another question here is, how many pounds can you safely lose per week? Um, again, ideally, we recommend anywhere from two to three pounds per week. Um, I'm sorry, one to two pounds per week. Sorry about that. Um, in order to do it safely. And the reason it's a little bit less than, because um, some people are like, oh, I lost five pounds in one week. Um, and sometimes that's typically just water weight as we start to make some changes. Um, but then also we want to make sure that number one, your weight loss is safe, but number two, that you're really instilling good, healthy behavior so that once you actually get to your, um, your goal weight, um, that you're able to then maintain it. Because sometimes if it goes too fast, we've maybe done something too drastic and not able to um, really get into um, a good routine. Let's see if I'm going down here. Um, just really quick on the protein powders. If you're allergic to dairy, there's tons of other options out there um, from pea protein to brown rice protein, hemp protein, quinoa. Lots of those ancient grains are coming out. Um, there's egg egg white um, protein. Um, there's also like grass-fed beef protein, um, all in powders. Um, so again, there's lots of different options for you um, if you do have that allergy. Um, and again, that's something you can specifically talk with your clinical health consultant to kind of fine tune, you know, what are the best brands out there, um, you know, to make sure that you're really, again, getting a good product. Um, another question, is it normal for your muscle to be sore two to three days after intense strength training workout? Um, and absolutely it is. It's called um, delayed onset muscle soreness. So DOMS, you might see it referred to. Um, and that's very typical. So the one thing that you want to do is you actually want to kind of keep moving. Um, but you might do more of like an active rest, like a yoga um, to kind of help break up that um, lactic acid and, and some of that soreness. Because um, if we, you know, do a hard day and then we're um, take two days off, you know, then again, we're just going to kind of cycle through that. Um, but again, that soreness is from those little micro tears that I had mentioned earlier. Um, and so those are, again, how we build our muscles. So even though it's not fun to be sore or kind of limp around for a little bit, um, but that is um, definitely something that's there. Um, and then another question um, is water consumption. So if I'm drinking, you know, what does that look like on workout days? And so ideally we want to make sure that you're drinking at least 
your 64 ounces per day, but then when we start to add exercise in there, um, this is where we actually need to be having more. So I think they talk about, um, I'm trying to remember specifically what it was, but anywhere from two to four ounces, basically every 15 minutes of exercise. Um, so definitely making sure that you have kind of a water bottle specifically for your exercise and count that above and beyond your water intake for the day um, to make sure, again, that you're properly hydrated. All right. Um, and I think the last question that I saw was, um, is it okay to run two days in a row? And it would be okay to run two days in a row um, as long as your body can handle it because it is a um, type of cardiovascular exercise. And cardiovascular exercise, um, things that get our heart rate up, we can do those basically every single day of the week if we wanted to. When it comes to strength training, um, when we're making those micro tears, that's where we want to be a little bit more careful. And again, you know, maybe do it every other day. Um, if you do know somebody who's doing it every day, then that means they're probably breaking up body parts as far as, um, you know, chest one day versus legs another day versus biceps another day um, in order to let their body heal on those off days. Um, so I hope that, um, that I've answered all of your questions today. Um, if you do have any more, I'll kind of stay on for just a, a little bit longer. Um, but otherwise, again, if you're not working with a clinical health consultant, I definitely encourage you to um, give us a call. Um, again, because this is where we can really personalize um, all of our nutrition as well as our exercise recommendations for you and your lifestyle or your family's lifestyle. So um, go ahead and, and call our, our number here, the 877-443-5227. Um, and again, that's our client services number and just let them know you'd like to schedule an appointment with a clinical health consultant and we would be happy to um, to help you out. And um, we love seeing the success of our patients and um, you know, great, great accountability. And so if you're, um, I know, again, there was a lot of information in the presentation today. So if you would like, um, please put your email into um, the questions box, and I will definitely take those down, and we will make sure that you get um, a PDF file of those um, I'm not sure somebody said that, maybe you lost me, but um, if you put down your email address into the question box, um, I will definitely take those down and we'll send you a um, PDF file with all of the slides. So then you can kind of pick and choose um, what you would like um, from there and then to print or just to kind of be able to go back into reference. So I see some of you are doing that, so that's excellent. I will definitely take those down. Um, and again, if you do need anything else, um, we are happy to, to definitely help you out um, by scheduling that one-on-one -on -one appointment. All right, and it looks like I'm getting lots of email addresses. So again, um, if we're all done with questions, you are um, more than welcome to kind of jump off or um, I'll stay on for just a couple more minutes and make sure all those email addresses come through. Oh, one quick question um, that I did see here is, is there a charge for one-on-one -on -one appointments? Um, and there is not. This is a um, value-added service that comes along. Um, if your doctor has ordered your um, test, your blood work through True Health Diagnostics, then this, again, is a free service for up to 12 months from the date of your last um, blood test. So, if you got one done today, you would have access to a clinical health consultant until May 10th of 2017. Um, and that could be once in that year, or it could be, you know, up to a, you know, weekly check-in by email or phone call. Um, so again, as much or as little um, as, as needed between you and your clinical health consultant. Good question. 
All right. Well, thanks again so much for everyone um, for coming, and um, we hope to have you on our next um, webinar, so definitely keep an eye out for those.